folks, Ariel over here at Fine Myth, um, where today what I'm doing is making a batch of fire cider. This stuff is the horseradish root I pried out of the very frozen ground the other day, washed up and with a little bit of peel um, taken off it just to clean up the mud. This is what a finished batch looks like. This I started months ago. Uh, plenty of months ago. Uh, six weeks is probably plenty for this to sit, but I like to make sure I never run out, so I always make a new batch when I'm about ready to strain one. Um, this is, you can see how dull the colors look, but uh, what did, I'm doing today is making a new batch. Now there is, um, I think Fire Cider was originally something by that name made by a lady called Rosemary Gladstar. She's a somewhat well-known herbalist. I actually have one of her books. Um, medicinal herbs. It's useful for a lot of things. I got the spiral bound copy. It's really nice because if you're trying to reference something, it actually lays completely flat. Anyway, she has a recipe in there for fire cider. A lot of people have done slightly different versions of it. This is my version. Um, anyway, the what I use fire cider for is for uh, just general Anytime I'm feeling like one of us is coming down with something, fighting something, and so on, I'll start doing little shots of uh, this stuff, and it seems to be pretty effective at boosting your immune system. Now, I'm not a doctor. Don't pretend to be one. I'm just telling you what I do. This is what the strained, you know, stuff looks like I put in a small jar. I'm going to use it. Um, just do a shot. You can pour it in a shot glass. Clay and I just share the jar because it's easier. The flavor is much actually, or the, the sensation is much like doing a shot of whiskey. It's a little hot, a little burny on your throat. Kind of makes you pucker up just a second. Pretty tasty. I actually have friends who, who really enjoy whiskey who say they really enjoy the flavor of this. So... It's basically a concoction with apple cider vinegar and uh, a whole ton of other things that are good for boosting your immune system. Now I'm making two half gallon jars here at once. You certainly could do smaller batches. We go through a good bit of it and so I like to make a bunch. Um, so I've done lemons in there, whole lemons, peel and all, so you probably want to use something that uh, was either organic or have washed the peels well. Onions, it does not matter what order you put things in here, other than I find onions to float a little more than some of the other items. Um, and just for convenience sake to not have them floating out of the top of the vinegar, I find it's handy to put them in toward the bottom. Once the, it's aged like that and has sat around for a while, uh, they don't float anymore anyway because I guess they're so saturated with the vinegar. And different people, like I said, have done different versions of this. I think the most basic version is apple cider vinegar, uh, onions, garlic, pepper, and maybe horseradish. Um, but I, like I said, like to do this particular combo. Let's get my onion pieces out of the way. And yes, the fridge is still sitting where it doesn't belong, which makes this part of the kitchen just a little snug. And it doesn't, especially where I try to plan to have mine have plenty of time to sit and steep. Uh, cutting this stuff up real fine doesn't really matter. I suppose if you were in more of a hurry, like you're making your first batch, if you wanted to, um, you know, dice everything a little smaller, it would probably extract just a little faster. That's not an issue for me because I already have batches going. So anyway, I'm just chunking the onions up. Gonna put one big onion each in each of these jars. Don't run out of space. I'm pretty good at running myself out of space. And there doesn't have to be any. You can look up different recipes, including rosemary's if you want. I'll try to remember to link to that book down below if you want to buy it. Like I said, there's there's lots of different copies of it, but I, uh, I find the spiral bound one to be handy if you actually want to be able to reference it while doing things. Um, but I don't clearly 
like most other things, and those onions are kind of strong and making my eyes water, um, do a lot of precise measuring for anything. I'll wipe up a little onion juice here so that my eyes don't water the whole time I'm talking to you guys. And then it, yeah, the order doesn't particularly matter. This is some fresh rosemary sprigs. Um, I've also done fresh oregano often. If I have some around, it's too cold outside. I don't have any fresh oregano left. Um, so I'm going to stuff those in. Let's just do this horseradish root. This is the stuff you guys saw me pry out of the ground the other day. And all I did since then was wash the dirt off. And I just peeled a little bit of the um, skin off. You don't really have to do that. If you can get a nice clean root out um, in a bigger chunk, if you're not trying to pry yours out of the frozen ground. This stuff is also strong. Um, that horseradish will make your eyes water too. It's a flavor I enjoy. But whoa, when you cut into a fresh root like that, it is pretty powerful. Um, anyway, so if you can get a nice long clean root out, then it's it's pretty nice because I was breaking off some of these knobbly tops. It was just a little bit hard to get some of the, the frozen dirt out of some of those cracks without having to peel the skin a little bit. And, whew, um, <laughs> all this stuff is quite powerful and the house is going to smell like a bunch of these medicinal things for a bit. Um, it's a smell I enjoy. That's just when you chop into fresh root like that, it's almost overpowering. Same thing here. I've got ginger root and you could peel. I'm not going to if, you know, it's a washed and clean skin on that root. And I am just cutting quickly into chunks. I have seen people dice all these into, you know, perfect little squares and you can do that and it looks nice where I'm making big batches and then I just let it go for many, many months. I find it easier to just do a very rough chop. So I'm packing in my, my ginger root, about half and half there into each of my jars. And then this is turmeric root, which I have to buy. It does not grow here. Well, ginger doesn't grow here either. That's what a, a whole turmeric root looks like if you've never um, seen it before. It's very intense orange inside. Something to be aware of is if you, uh, if you're not choking on horseradish fumes, um, if you don't want to stain your cutting board or your fingers, you might want to use gloves or something. Be aware that that intense orange color can be a little um, staining. So just something to be aware of. I'm not too worried about it. I use my cutting board for things like this all the time. And it is snow flurrying outside again today. When you have a very gray, cloudy, snowy day at this time of year, this, it gets dark at about 3.30 in the afternoon up here in the mountains. And uh, so the light is a little dim in here already. But now we're going to throw in our turmeric. And garlic cloves, I should have peeled them. Um, peppers. Most people probably don't need to do this. I seem to be extra sensitive to any kind of pepper, like spicy thing. Um, I don't know why I, you know, if you go to like a restaurant that asks you what level of heat you want, I always want a zero or one. I have friends who can take things super hot but I, I don't think it's just me being a wimp because when I go to do something like this just the pepper oil from touching and these are just jalapenos I mean these are not anything super super hot just the pepper oil from touching it um, with my bare skin can give me a burn so something about my body is more sensitive than most people to hot pepper things and that is why I wear gloves just for handling these. Um, they, they, and it's only it seems to be when they're fresh that the oil bugs me. You know, I can get do something like fire cider. Mm. Hey baby, we're staying in here right now. Really? Wait a minute. We're staying inside for this moment. Yeah, you were just chasing a frisbee. Um, anyway, it doesn't seem to bother me once they're cut up, but 
something about the fresh just doesn't work well with me. And so I use a pair of gloves like this. But normal people can handle jalapenos without it burning their skin. Um, as you don't, you know, touch your eyes or things like that, which are probably obvious to anybody who's ever used a pepper before. Don't run away. And I just think this stuff is really pretty. I know some people do them in small jars, especially if you're going to dice this stuff all up more tiny and precise and um, make it very beautiful for like giving as Christmas gifts or something like that. Any kind of gift for people who would appreciate something like this. Just again wiping out my, my pepper oil so that I can go on to my last thing here which is getting garlic in there. Isn't that just pretty, looking at uh, all the different colors of stuff in their layers in the jar? And you can see how bright they look compared to one that's been steeping in, you know, vinegar for a while. The color's kind of, kind of dull over time. And that, like I said, is ready to extract. I try to let them go at least six weeks. And again, I'm not even cutting into my garlic cloves because I know I'm going to give them plenty of time. This particular jar the, is tagged as 12021, so it is 11 months of sitting there steeping. That's partly why I'm okay with my very big chunks here because I know when I make two gallons like this, and I've got actually two of these done from the last batch I made, um, it's going to be a bit before I need to do more again. So peeling the garlic cloves is going to just take a minute and I'm going to throw the rest of them in the top of here and then my jars are pretty full and the only other thing that you add is apple cider vinegar. Uh, make your own by Bragg's. This is a local store brand. Um, what you want is it should have floaties down there on the bottom. It'd be an unfiltered apple cider vinegar that's getting you the, what's called the vinegar mother. It's all the um, good bacterias and yeasts and stuff, the, the culture that makes the vinegar and we want that. This is still a live thing. I'm not heating this at all. And I'm just going to put vinegar in here until I cover everything. And then I like to put a lid on it. Um, if you have some of these plastic lids, it can be nice because the, uh, the metal ring lids can kind of rust with long exposure to a lot of vinegar. Um, so that can be handy. And then I just put a piece of tape on the little sticker or whatever you use on the top that says what date I started it. And again, put it in the back of the cupboard until it's done like this. And then I will pour this out just through a strainer and kind of mash all of the, um, you know, stuff that's in there. It's all very soft and tender now. Like even those hard roots like the horseradish and the turmeric and such, um, once they've soaked like this, they're very soft. I just mush them through a strainer and then have my liquid like you saw I put it in often smaller bottles to drink out. If this sits, you'll see all the floaty cloudy bits sink to the bottom. I just kind of shook it there grabbing it out of the cupboard um, and it uh, you know mixed it up again but that's how I drink it. Um, and the mush, the fire cider mush when I harvest this goes off to the chickens. So yeah, that's as you can see pretty quick. Um, if you, uh, except for the waiting for weeks or months part, so if you've never made any, I recommend getting some made right now so that you have it around anytime you feel like you're coming down with some kind of cruddy and want to drink a shot of it. You guys have a great day. Hello over here at Finest. Thank you so much for watching these videos and spending some of your very valuable time choosing to do that. We hope you found something that was useful, educational, helpful, maybe save someone else some time and trouble, or just something just plain beautiful. If you don't want to miss any videos, subscribe and hit the bell. And thanks for coming along on our journey as we build a new little homestead with our tiny house and everything to come.